Very exciting day on the Extreme Channel today. Not only are we going to review this statue, but we just hit 12,500 subs. That means we're going to give him away to one of you. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is the Extreme Channel. Not only do we review high-end collectibles, but we give them away. That's right, we are giving away this Baraka statue because we hit 12,500 subs. So at the end of the video, I'm going to explain how that's going to work. But we're going to do a traditional review first. And I got good news for you. If you're not interested in this Baraka statue, or if you enter into it and you don't win then we're doing another giveaway in 2,500 subs, so very, very soon. But Baraka is a character from Mortal Kombat. Now, he wasn't in all the Mortal Kombat series. I'm not 100% familiar with Mortal Kombat. I played it as a child. I remember number one, number two, number three. We have number 10. I've played that with my children. And I don't even believe he's in number 10. I think this one was from number nine. He is not a widely loved character, even though he is my favorite Mortal Kombat character of all time. Also from Mortal Kombat, I purchased Sub-Zero, Scorpion, and the one-third Goro. Actually, at the end of this video, you'll see links to those reviews. But I figured before I give him away, I might as well as review him. Now, one of the reasons he was my favorite character is he's just badass. He's very different. You almost have like a cross between Deadpool and Wolverine and some kind of freakish, ghoulish monster. So I loved him in the games, and he's probably my favorite of the four statues I just mentioned. So it kind of saddens me that I'm giving him away. Now, while he's my favorite character, he's not that popular of a character, and I think that's demonstrated in the fact that they only made 350 of these statues, and they retailed it at about 370 and most of the time, you can get it for a little bit cheaper than that, even to this day. But in my opinion, this is just an awesome piece, not only as a representation of the character, but by Pop Culture Shock Toys. And we're going to look at all that stuff today. We're going to look at the pros and the cons and the extreme review. So as always, let's start out with concept. Now, Pop Culture Shock Toys has done a number of Mortal Kombat pieces in different scales. One-third scale, one-fourth scale, life-size bus, and typically... They do different types of bases. Some of them were just museum black style bases, which I hate. Some have a little bit of stuff going on like this one and some have a lot, but let's take a look at this one. So you have this charred earth rocky base and I actually kind of like this. It's not overwhelming, but it tells enough of the story. You know, with Mortal Kombat, there's so many different levels and I don't remember what Baraka's level was and I'm sure it changes from game to game, but I think the cool thing about this is it, it works no matter what you have on it and it still is interesting. So these rocks are kind of scorched and dark and they're jutting up. And as you move up, he is in a very dynamic pose. He's leaping forward. Uh, he's got his traditional armor on, his traditional clothing. And we're going to look at that with paint and sculpt. It is all fully sculpted, no mixed media, which I really appreciate. And as you move up, he also has a lunging pose with his arms and his torso. Now he does have some switch out pieces we're going to look at in design. And he is in full rage mode. He's showing his teeth, one of my favorite aspects of him. He's got these beady yellow and red eyes, and he just looks extremely fierce. This is not a guy you would want to screw with. And I love everything they did on this statue. I think it captures the character perfectly. I like the fact that because it's in this dynamic type pose, you can actually pose him against other characters, even if they're kind of a museum or a, another action dynamic pose. I like everything they did here. I think the concept's done very, very well. I think that if you tie it back to Baraka from, I, like I said, I think this is Mortal Kombat 9. It's decently accurate. So let's give the concept a 4 out of 5. Really like what they did. I think it was a very smart statue. And this is one of those things that just kind of blows me away. This isn't more popular. Now let's talk about design. And there are a few flaws in the design. First, I want to talk about a seam line. They have a seam line on the head. There is no switch out portrait, but there's a big old seam line on the head. And the head is also permanently attached. So WTF, right? Let's look at the different switch out options. So essentially what it is, is both of his arms come off and you have a few different switch out options. So let's take a look. So here it is how I had him displayed where both of his arms are lunging back. And then you could switch out both of the arms and they're kind of moving forward, almost like he's gonna stab someone in the chest. And of course, you could do one of each if you wanted to. And personally, I like them all. I think there's a number of different ways to do it. 
the way I had him set up, honestly, was where he would fit in my display the best. I had him in a Maja case with uh, some of those other Mortal Kombat figures. So I think that's a good advantage that not only do they tell a little bit different story, one, he's running at them, the other, he's about to stab them, but uh, you can switch it up any way you want. So with that, let's get the dimensions actually really quick. So depending how you display him, I would actually call this his depth is about uh, a, little 14, a little under 15 inches. The tallest point is right at about 16 and a half, a little less. And of course his width or whatever you want to call this will change based on the display options. But I would say from blade to blade, it's right at about 19 inches. And of course that'll change if you use the other switch out. I like the fact that they stuck with all sculpted, none of it's mixed media. That was very smart. So really just the big knock on design is that nasty seam line, which I don't understand as well. Also look at his teeth right here. I've owned him so long, I can't tell if these broke off or it's supposed to look like that because he's kind of fierce. But his teeth are obviously a break hazard, so that's kind of a negative as well. But realistically on the design, I give it a three out of five. It's very good. That seam line is nasty, the potential teeth breakage issues. And I know you might be thinking you're taking a lot of points off for just those things. They're decently big things because the portrait is, in my opinion, what this statue is all about. But I am very impressed with the paint and sculpt on this piece. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at that and we'll start at the bottom, move to the top. So here is that scorch brick that we were talking about. It looks good. I like the shading on it. I like the texture. A lot of detail went into this for such a simplistic base, but I think it really adds to the statue and it doesn't take away from Brock at all. Looks good. As you move up Brock, you're going to see he has a number of different things. He has uh, armor and clothing all mixed together. He kind of has Ninja Turtle shoes, so I wonder what his feet look like if he doesn't have human feet. But uh, they look good. There's a little bit of texture, a little bit of rubbing and dirt on there. And as you move up, he has these shin guards or these this armored uh, shin covers here that almost look like a black brown leather with some cool straps on the back wrapped around the uh, sculpted pants or padding right here. And there's tons of folds and creases. It's this maroon color that matches a little bit of his dress we're going to look at. Then looking at his pants, a lot more folds and creases and a lot more texture in this as well. With seam lines running up the side. It, it looks really good. I'm really impressed by this piece. It's one of PCS's better ones in my opinion. His skirt flowing in the front and back. I like how there's a, a again, I like the designs in it. I like the color they use. There's some more texture. The flow of it, the folds make it look really good. His belt looks awesome. Again, some more of that black leather type material we were talking about with this silver skull buckle that looks faded and tarnished. And really quick, one thing I forgot, he has this these skulls on his knee pads, these armored knee pads that look really good with a lot of that same tarnishing. Then his torso, his gi, or whatever you want to call it, a lot of the stuff we saw in the dress with these black shoulder pads almost with what looks like rivets in it. Some cool red skulls on the front. And here's a picture of the back. You can kind of see his muscles bulging out underneath the clothing too. So like I said, very, very good job on the sculpt. And you can see that in the arms. Great job displaying his muscles and the paint job. So his skin has a few things going on, different flesh tones in there, and then these spots all over it, which I assume is accurate to the character. Almost looks like thousands and thousands of freckles. And then you see the veination and there's some blue uh, paint right on it. Some subtle blue paint. Looks really, really good. I like the spikes coming out of his arm and then there's red blood around it. Almost like uh, they just emerged. And I can't remember in the game if they were always out. Then look at the huge blades that come out of his arm. These look good. I like the speckled dried blood on here, so he hasn't yet used them in this battle. I really don't want to give this away as I continue to look at it, especially when you get to the portrait. In my opinion, the portrait's just badass. The expression is awesome. His weird elven-like nose. Those teeth are amazing, in my opinion. Then his blood, yellow and black eyes, elf ears. Just really, really good job. Again, it just blows my mind why this piece doesn't sell for more. Uh, I'm going to actually grade the paint and sculpt the same. I think they're both 4 out of 5 on this. I think PCS knocked it out of the park. They did really good, especially when you consider the fact there's not a lot of Baraka statues out there. So if you're a Mortal Kombat collector, this is definitely one you want to have. So does this statue have the X factor? So when you look at it, is it wow overall? No, it's not. It's not a 5 out of 5 statue, but I would give this a 4 out of 5 statue, especially when you include the rarity of the character, you include the great paint and sculpt, good concept. Very well done, PCS. 
So this is gonna find its way to one of you worldwide, no matter what you're at, shipping will be on me. So all you have to do in this video right here is comment below. We're gonna use a random comment picker. What I want you to do is write hashtag Baraka giveaway. Comment that below and you're entered into this. About one week from today, we're gonna do another video where we will pick a winner from those comments and then I'll let you know what the next giveaway is. And the next giveaway, this is all I'll tell you, the winner actually gets to choose between one or two statues that are actually valued more than this guy. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. You have to be subscribed to enter into the contest and check out some of these other pieces by Pop Culture Shock Toys in the playlist. Take care. Talk to you tomorrow.